months, the CRS team has uh, made some significant enhancements to the pre-post uh, reporting tool, mainly um, allowing users to uh, use a self-service functionality. Uh, so we thought it would uh, really made sense to uh, get together a broader uh, training uh, to make sure all of the, the users were on the same page. And um, we're also going to be recording this training um, to use in future settings. Um, so I'm going to start the recording now uh, and, um, and we'll get going in just a few minutes. Uh, so just a little bit of housekeeping before we get started here. Um, we're going to mute all of the conference line or all of the lines into the Zoom. Um, so if you have questions, feel free to use the uh, to type those into the chat box. And um, as we as we go, we will try to try to address those, uh, you know, within the context of the presentation. Uh, we'll open up all lines at the uh, conclusion of the presentation uh, so you can uh, answer your question over the phone if you'd like. Um, so starting off the, uh, the agenda for today, um, we will go over the learning objectives for today's session, talk a little bit about the history of pre-post reporting, um, talk about the data source and the methodology used in the report, then really dive into the details on how to load a new program into the tool. We'll review the different dashboards that you have available as a user. Uh, and then, like I mentioned, we'll open it up for question and answer. Uh, so the main focus of today is to um, educate you all on the using our new uh, self-service uh, panel loader, uh, as well as making sure folks understand the uh, methodology behind the report. Um, of course, uh, CRISP support is our, our main uh, support line. Uh, so there's a toll-free number and a email address, and we'll provide those later at the end of the presentation um, if there are follow-up questions or comments um, on the presentation. Um, so a little bit of a history back in uh, early, 2015, we piloted uh, initial pre-post reports with, uh, with HCAM. Um, about a year later, we really started ramping up and collecting uh, stakeholder feedback. Uh, and we made some updates to the dashboard. Um, there were some groups, the Bay Area Partnership and the Coordinating Center really were instrumental in uh, critically examining the first drafts and the, the first cuts of these reports and helping to guide uh, a lot of the enhancements that we made, things like um, adding filtering options and um, updating the utilization assignment uh, for the methodology. So um, we thank the, those partners for their, uh, their great uh, feedback. Uh, and then in 2018, we expanded the pre-post reporting to uh, include non-hospital based users. Uh, so up until that point, we were really relying on identifying patients based solely on the case mix, the hospital case mix MRN. Um, and just recently we expanded to accept MRNs from ENS subscribers and so that non-hospital users could, um, could utilize the report. Uh, so a little bit about the source data. Um, the uh, source data is the HSCRC uh, claims information, so in, in, inpatient and outpatient um, case mix data, so including uh, inpatient visits, observation visits, emergency room stays, uh, outpatient surgeries and visits. Uh, that's the core of uh, the data that we present uh, in the analysis. A uh, couple pieces about that data is that it's uh, it's slightly delayed since that uh, information is not uh, sent automatically to CRISP like the real-time ADT information is that populate the uh, clinical query portal on the ENS service. So it takes about six weeks uh, more or less for 
the case mix data to load into our databases. I believe the case mix data is current through April at this point. So what is the pre-post um, for users that are, are new to the tool? Uh, pre-post is uh, really meant to give users a general idea of, uh, the, of, of program effectiveness and how a program is performing at keeping patients out of a hospital. Um, Pre-post isn't a you know, rigorous scientific analysis. It's a, a one group only with, with no control group. Uh, Pre-post design with really a fixed before and after period. Uh, the denominator for the report is uh, based on each of the patient's program enrollment dates and the most recent case mix data that CRISP has available. So patients can be excluded based on that enrollment date and the latest case mix data available as well as the user defined time period selected. And I'll speak a little bit more about those distinctions when we dive into the report itself. Uh, and then lastly, patient mortality is, is not a factor and really nothing else is factored or adjusted or normalized about the data. Um, it's essentially a separation of, uh, or an aggregation of the Maryland hospital utilization data before and after um, individual start dates that the user submits on um, on a panel, and then looking at that one, three, six, and 12 month uh, time increments. Um, so with that under our belts, let's uh, get into some details and actually walk through how to access the report. Um, so as you all may or may not know, the uh, URL to get to our website is reports.crisphealth.org, and it looks like this. When you log in with the username and password, you'll get to our main landing page, which has different cards that house different report types. Um, and so since the pre-post is a panel-based report, as we call it, you click on the panels tab. Uh, and as you can see, there are uh, the name of the report on the left-hand side and then the different icons for report types and documentation. Um, and the, uh, this is the icon for the Tableau report. Uh, and then the question mark represents our you know, static documentation. Uh, recently, we've been um, recording our trainings like this one today and, and adding them um, here, right here. So you'll see another icon for um, some of the reports that we've started to uh, do recorded trainings on and for some of these uh, reports you'll be able to access that um, training video right here within the uh, the sub card um, so that's a really neat update that we've just started doing and then a ribbon at the bottom that gives you a key for the different report types um, so how to load a program um, so when you actually let me back up a second when you go in uh, to the portal and you click on either the pre-post analysis text or the Tableau icon, um, you'll get to your summary page where you'll have the option to click on this new program button. Uh, once you've clicked on that, you'll have a pop-up window that says program editor. And so this is where you um, basically select the MRN type that you'll be using for your pre-post panel. And so the options here are hospital case mix MRN or the, your ENS panel MRN. Um, and so you will click on download template and the template is a simple Excel file with I believe just three um, columns asking for the source code of the, uh, the, the MRN source that you're using, uh, the patient identifier, whether it be the hospital MRN or the ENS panel MRN, and then the, the start date. Um, and so you'll download that template, you'll paste your data into the template, um, and here we go, we have the hospital MRN or the ENS MRN in one column, the source code, which is that unique CRISP identifier 
that we use um, for the source of the medical record number. Um, right now, the panel loader does not allow for more than one source uh, code per panel. So you'll have to pick one and stick with it in the template. And then the program enrollment date um, with your standard um, month, month, day, day, year, year, year um, format. Um, all of this information is located in the documentation so that under that question mark icon, you can find this kind of step-by-step -step instruction information right there. Um, so just as a, as a note to, to everyone. Uh, and then you'll save your, the template on your computer. Typically, I um, like to just stick stuff in the desktop so it's easier to find if you're just going to be uploading it right away. Um, you'll re return to the program editor in the CRS portal. And then you'll give your program a unique name so it can't be the same name that you've given a previous uh, program that won't be allowed. So you'll just have to name that uniquely. Um, you will select your hospital or your ENS panel using the drop down arrow. So, depending on which facilities or which ENS subscribers you're um, credentialed for, you'll have options when you drop down the hospital or the ENS panel. Uh, you'll browse for your file and you'll click save. Um, it'll take about a minute or so to upload. Um, and then, once that is completed, you'll see the program name box in the upper left-hand corner pre-post, and you'll uh, be able to select the panel that you just uploaded. Um, so that's essentially how to create a new program. It's, uh, it's really straightforward. I like um, the flow of it. It's, uh, it's very intuitive. Um, there is an option to update an existing program. So if you want to uh, continually add to a rolling roster, for example, um, and maybe take snapshots of the utilization month over month when we um, update the case mix data, uh, you have an option to add and to update a, a, a single roster. And so that's essentially the same, uh, the same flow. You would um, click on update program rather than having the new program uh, radio box selected. And you'll have a drop down of the programs that you have created. And so you'll just select the one that you'd like to update. Uh, you'll browse for the file um, and then you'll click on save. And then again, this is an overwrite of your um, pre post program. Um, and so that will overwrite the, that existing panel with, with everyone that you have added in your new panel. Uh, one caveat here uh, that some users get tripped up on is uh, when there are invalid MRNs, so invalid medical record num numbers, yeah, you'll get a uh, error message that will allow you to go ahead and complete the upload process with a partial upload, or um, you can stop and stop the download and, and just look at the invalid patients. Um, so there's a number of different reasons why there would be a invalid MRN. Our support team, um, our customer care team is really the, uh, the go-to team to investigate that, those types of issues. I wanna note um, that if you are sending PHI over to CRISP, um, we use uh, CRISP Direct and the Direct Standard. Um, and so support team at crispdirect.org is the email address that you want to communicate with if you're sending over potentially, you know, the handful of five uh, invalid medical record numbers that couldn't be matched to a CRISP um, enterprise ID or a CRISP EID. Um, so with that said, I think it's time we jump into the different uh, dashboards that you have available to you. So um, the first dashboard is our summary tab. And the summary tab essentially aggregates the visits and charges um, as well as gives you average visits and charges on a pre versus post basis uh, in a chart format. Um, so this is really good for the more 
uh, you know, numbers driven folks or, or people that are uh, interested in kind of the, uh, the just a raw list of, of, of metrics. Um, on the top of the dashboard, we have, as I've talked about, the program name that you can select. We have different filters for most recent payer, visit type, different chronic condition indicators, and then the number of patients that can contribute to the analysis up here um, at the one, three, six, and 12 month level. The next tab is really the primary um, dashboard. Uh, it's really the best visual representation of the data that we have here. Um, and I've included some uh, annotations here just to make sure everyone uh, understands um, what each part of this dashboard is doing. So at the top left, we have um, different uh, buttons for refreshing the data, reverting, and pause. Um, the top of the dashboard is the aggregate of all hospitals before utilization before and after looking at total charges, number of visits and number of members. Um, at the bottom here, we break this down by the individual hospitals. On the right hand side, there's always the option to print to find the user guide uh, and then to create the new program if you want to do that. Uh, within this screen. I believe within all of the different tabs, you have the option to create a new program. Um, the reference data here is, is really important. It uh, really helps evaluate or it, it, it helps clarify the end, uh, what you're looking at. Uh, and then lastly, the different filters, uh, the payer filter time period, visit type, and hospital. Um, and so typically when users you know, access the, the data, the first thing they do would be to, um, in my experience, select the time period. Because as you select the time period, as you can imagine, the data is going to look a little bit differently. Um, and so this next slide really reviews um, the different, uh, the, those reference metrics that I reviewed earlier um, for total number of members in the panel, total number of members with data for the analysis, and the number of members with visits during the analysis period. Um, and so the simplest way to explain these is this top uh, metric is essentially how many patients were matched to a CRISP EID. Um, the second metric down here is how many patients are, you know, quote unquote, qualified for the analysis. So based on their start date, the latest data of the latest case mix data that Chris has and the user defined time period, how many patients could contribute regardless if they actually had a case mix visit or not. Um, and then lastly, uh, this third bullet here is really how many patients are actually contributing to the analysis that you're viewing. So how many patients had a visit within uh, the time period that's selected. Uh, the last tab is uh, the breakdown of charges tab. And so this shows the uh, total charges for each charge type that is defined in the case mix data um, before and after enrollment. As you can see on the right hand side, the uh, filters persist. Um, and so when you set a filter at the first tab, that will carry over to the breakdown of charges tab. Um, and you, you have the same filters available to you that you had in the panel, ana panel analysis tab as well as uh, the summary tab. Um, and that went through that a lot faster than I had anticipated. I'm not sure, Kevin, if there are any questions in the chat box. A couple other things I wanted to mention, though, is that um, we are working on a, a visit level pre-post that will be available to hospital users only, and that's um, the development on that work hasn't started yet, but we're looking to um, begin development in the in the next month or so. Um, another thing I wanted to mention uh, is that we there isn't a right now we don't have a real time feed for our ENS panel data, and so the ENS 
um, data is uh, the the ENS patients that we're able to match is is a little delayed. It's about a month or so delayed, uh, but we're working to um, improve that process so that we have a real time uh, communication with the ENS panels. So that if you, for example, uh, update your ENS panel uh, last week. Um, in, a, in a handful of days, in two or three days, you would be able to add that patient to your pre-post program um, without delay or without receiving a, um, an error when you're uploading that, that newer patient to your pre-post analysis. Uh, getting access to this report is, is fairly straightforward. We have an application that's actually embedded within the CRS portal that allows the point of contact at each hospital or ENS subscriber to log in and to verify users to access pre-post. And so uh, really the point of contact is in, is in the driver's seat here uh, for getting users access to the data. Um, if you don't know who your POC, your point of contact is, uh, please reach out to support at chrispelth.org or the toll-free uh, 877-952-7477 number, um, and the support team can help you um, identify that point of contact, get in touch with that point of contact so you can have access to the data. So that being said, we're just under a half an hour. Uh, we're, I know we, we've wrapped this up a, a lot faster than I had expected. I think uh, Kevin, if we want to open up the phone lines or maybe see if there's any questions that have come through in the chat, we're going to address those now. <laughs> okay, so this is a question that um, roster, program, and panel. And, and what's the difference? So this is a great question, and this is something um, that you may talk to one crisp person about and another crisp person, and one person may say roster, one person may say program, one person may say panel, but let me just back up here. Um, and and within the pre-post world, we're actually trying to move towards just calling them programs um, because a lot of the ENS submitters we, the nomenclature we use is panel for ENS panel, ENS panel. Um, and I think it'd make everyone's lives a lot easier if we all got on board and referred to pre-post lists as, as programs. Um, but uh, with the presentation that I just went over, they, they essentially all mean the same thing. It's a list of patients that you are, um, providing to Chris that you have a treatment relationship with either based on that patient's visit at your hospital or that patient's visit to your practice and your ENS um, messages received on those patients. Um, but it's, it's essentially a list of patients with some identifiers and, and uh, for ENS it's demographic information for pre post since we already have that, that linkage, we don't need the demographic information. We just need the medical record number. Um, it's it's a list of patients. Any anything else in the, the chat box, Kevin? Okay, good question. The ability to delete a program. So you do. So if you want to, you know, go in here and and maybe you're not sure um, that you have the whole process down right, I, I would recommend um, coming in and and just trying to to build the program and 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 um, look at the analysis if for some reason you um, want to include more patients or you include patients that you don't want to, you can always go in and delete the, the, the panel that you, or sorry, the program <laughs> that you have uploaded. So that's very easy. And let me see if I can get a screenshot. I believe there's a screenshot of that when we update the program. So here we go. So when you go into update program, you can select your program that you've previously established. Um, and I didn't mention this, but you can download the patients just to confirm which patients you're looking at under this specific program. And you do that by clicking this button, 
or you can just delete that and wipe out that program so you don't see it again by clicking delete. Great question. So with source codes, um, since there's 47 source, uh, hospital source codes, we list those all in the documentation. And they're, those source codes are, um, I believe your, you know, your, medic, your CMS uh, identifier with, with Medicare, uh, starting with 2-1. Um, and those are all listed in the documentation for the ENS source codes. As you can imagine, there's couple thousand ENS source codes now and so when you actually click the let me back up or actually you can see it on this screen when you click on MRN uh, source MRN type and if you flip this to ENS panel MRN oops you flip this to ENS panel MRN you'll have the options of the ENS panels that you are credentialed for and so you will select your ENS panel and next to the name of that panel is the source code for that panel. Typically, I think it's for uh, numbers, uh, if I'm not mistaken, but um, that, that, pa that uh, source code will actually be right within this tool. So you'll just look at that four, uh, four digit code and then paste that into the Excel template um, if that's the route you're taking. Question about the source codes being all letters. I believe these are numerical codes. Um, I believe it's four numbers in the source code, but we can uh, double check on that and get back to the, the, the group. Um, off the top of my head, I believe it's four numbers. Oh, it's letters. Okay, it is, it is letters, I was wrong. Um, Anything else, Kevin, that has come through the chat window that we can address? Oh, great. Yeah, so the, the comparison group, as I mentioned earlier, is that you know, since there is no comparison really built into the tool, um, some users have um, you know, essentially created their own control group by um, loading a second panel of patients that maybe um, did not receive the intervention, for example, and they want to look at both panels and, and compare and contrast the hospital, the hospital utilization. And so um, what, what users have done is just literally added, or let's, let's scroll back here, literally, you know, um, loaded two programs. So maybe um, post-discharge clinic one program name, and then um, loaded a second program where patients were not referred to the post-discharge clinic, um, but had similar clinical clinical characteristics, then they w would like to use that as a control group. So now they have two different programs loaded into pre-post. Uh, when you're on the dashboard, you will have, um, backing up here, you'll have uh, two different programs listed here that you can select. Um, and so basically it's uh, looking at the one program with your payer or your visit type filters uh, selected, however you'd like to look at it, uh, taking a snapshot or taking a download of this data um, and then looking at your control group or the secondary panel that you have uploaded and taking a snapshot of that data uh, and then doing some comparison and, and some contrasting. Um, we do have a tab in the dashboard um, called relative trend analysis that I don't have a screenshot of right now in this presentation, but what that does is that looks at, it gives you a, um, visualization in a line graph format. So you can look at um, both of those panels on the same screen. 
Um, so it's a, it's a real basic visualization. It doesn't really drill as deep as what you're looking at on the screen here, uh, but it, it looks at just raw visits and charges before and after for the two different programs on the same screen. And so that's located in this relative trend analysis tab. Um, and so that is also available uh, for users. Could you, okay, so if a, a panel includes people who are um, beyond the 12 month period um, from, from their program start date, how does the system handle that analysis? So if the, the, pan, the program that you, you load includes patients that have start dates, say in April of 2017, so for example, a patient that you load with an April 2017 start date could contribute to the one, three, six, or 12 month analysis. So that patient here would be able to contribute to all of those, all of those time period analysis because her start date was 12 months before the latest date of case mix refresh. So for that patient, we have, we have hypothetically a full 12 months after the start date for that patient. Um, on the other hand, for patients with more recent start dates, so more recent than April of 2017, say January of 2018, uh, we wouldn't be able to run a six month analysis for that patient with a start date of January 2018 um, because we only have data up through uh, April and we only have four months of data hypothetically for that patient. So that patient wouldn't be included in a 12 month or a six month analysis. That patient would only be included in a one or a three month analysis. Does that make sense to the user that asked? If, if not, um, we could take it offline and um, it kind of explain exactly how that process works. Yes, so we will, we are recording this presentation and then we will also distribute the slide deck um, later this afternoon to everyone that uh, has joined. And if you have questions, if you have further questions, support is really your, your, first, um, your first contact. Um, if it's something that's more, you know, in depth or, or technical, um, that will uh, be, escalated to someone else on the team that has more expertise. But um, if you could route, you know, any questions about this presentation or um, issues that you may or may not be having with the, the pre post loading tool through the support line, um, that would be great. And we'll uh, get back to you as soon as we can. Yeah, good question. I, I, I don't have a screenshot of that yet, but let me just move back to the um, card. So right here, and Kevin, you may know this, there's another icon. I think it's just of a, of a computer screen. Okay, it looks like a YouTube um, play button. And so that will be to the right of the documentation. So um, this recording now will be posted there um, as fast as we can get it up, probably in a week or so. Um, and so you can access this uh, presentation on demand if, if um, I wasn't clear on anything or if you forgot something. Great. Well, that wraps up the presentation for today. We'll give you all a little over 20 minutes back uh, for your lunch. And thanks, everyone, for joining. Hope this was, hope this was helpful.